Be resolved the minutes for the regular meeting of January 10th be adopted as circulated. Need a mover? Amen. Seconder? Amen. All in favor? Carried. I'll just comment on that when the joint minutes haven't been circulated, but I didn't put them on there, so the next meeting, when you read them, I'll put them on there. Okay. Get me to go for it? Yeah, if he's here. Yeah, I just checked them. Oh, yeah. Keith Tony is going to join us by the phone regarding this time that we're dreaming about for residential areas in the road for fire protection. Oh, do you have two? Okay, yeah. I'm going to give David this one. That's my coffee. Oh, do you have one? Oh, I did this one. Okay, here we go. Nope. <laughs>
And uh, in doing that, I don't know if we're talking about it, I think at least we're letting the people know you can send them a piece of paper, yeah, so they're going to look at it. This here, if you put a sign up, it's there all the time. They might take a read, hopefully they do. But then if we go to a call and something happens, we can say, well, we posted it, uh, you know, you guys didn't do your due diligence. We, uh, we're trying to help you out here. So I don't know where you want to go with this, but any questions? Okay, perfect. Did you get a price on 10 ones too? No, I didn't. Well, but these are that, uh, they drag up. I don't know if I really have to really call them, but they're not the, the, the they're not that core class from you stuff. They're, and they, that's what they use now. That's what they're using for all the signs, the range stuff, the boards and stuff. Right. And they seem to be holding up pretty good, I think, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he said they say they'll last for 10 to 12 years for sure. And he said then you might have to review the, like, the lettering or something. But he said besides that, he said they should, you know, they should be good for, you know, for the lifetime actually, but just have to redo them maybe in 10 or 12 years, but. Mm -hmm. <coughs> For the burn permits, should we be uh, providing a telephone number? Uh, I, there's not, there's, on those signs there is. Uh, it's just a, actually it's the uh, office at the uh, park sign. But uh, yeah, I don't know if we could like, add that in there. Oh, yeah, if they're supposed to get a permit. Yeah. You know, it should have a number that's. I can put it on there, yeah. That they can easily locate. Yeah. Yeah, we could add that in there. That's easy enough done. Okay. Probably change next year. I like the, I like number one there, keeping the yards mowed and well watered, because uh, after the fire happened, when we were patrolling there for that week, just yeah. checking it out, nobody had a sprinkler going at all yet. Like, no, and it's like that's yeah, just the simplest thing you can do to help. Right? And do that too, as well, and they didn't seem to do that, but yeah, hopefully they learned from that. I hope so. Well, they didn't seem to, but <laughs> well, I think the whole idea is just to put up a reminder for them. Thanks a lot for uh, the work you guys have done on this so far. Yeah. We'll take a look at it and find some money exactly. somewhere, probably. Okay. Okay, thank you, Bob. Thanks, okay, Steve. Thank you. Yep, yep, bye. Okay, we'll okay. down the table if anybody has any comments on all that stuff, but <coughs> obviously if the fire department's putting it together, we're not gonna jump in there and mm -hmm. Lisa, right? And I think the post that he's referring to, I know that and when Andrew was still here, he checked and we do have posts available so that that won't be a cost if we have them for a civic sign. So the only question I have to ask is when I was looking at the list of subdivisions, I didn't see like Earl and subdivision on there. Oh, I'll put that on as well. Thank you. Good idea. Yep. Well, you know what I'll there. do is I'll send this out to everybody to make sure that it's covering. Because they mean, sure that you need Byron. That was on there. It's all, yeah, Byron. Byron was on there. Yeah. Strawberry Plains is on there. Right. Yeah. But yeah, maybe what I'll do is I'll just send out this sheet to you guys to make sure yeah. if you have any more that you think of. And then once we get those then we'll get some done up. Okay, the interest all that the financial statement for January 2022 be referred to council. Any the mover? Seconder? Light. Questions or concerns? Is this the payments? No, oh, I don't. If not at this time, we're still around the table. All in favor? Okay. Be resolved in about check number 28460 to check number 28567, totaling $387,966.42. 
and direct deposit withdrawals of seventy thousand six ninety seven oh one be approved for payment. I need a mover. No. Seconder. Aye. Questions or concerns? A couple of questions here. A check to Bank of Montreal for twenty four thousand nine hundred. Uh, it's about 28, 11, is that for loss yes. mm -hmm. yeah, it's a bit different than what the auditors show. yes mm -hmm. I uh, am talking to Pam about that so we're going to look and see what we can do okay. on that one yeah, yeah. But, um, I think the way that that one worked is um, when that bylaw was done up for the debenture I believe that the amount was a little bit off <coughs> from what was levied. Could so easily pay. Yeah. Depend on when payments were made right. and stuff. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I noticed it was a different amount. Right. Um, might as well ask this Malcolm Ryder talking. It'd be a Tormont cut eleven thousand one hundred. What's what's the check number again? Um, five one seven. Mm -hmm. Five one seven? Yep. I'd have to look. Um, Are you trying to look it up here? I can pull it up here so you know what I have. I have remote access. This is exciting. <laughs> it's right on the screen here. Just a second. During its regular meeting at 9.15 a.m. for the purpose of holding public hearings regarding an application for a conditional use order and variation. Any mover? Mm -hmm. Seconder? Okay. Great. Oh. All in favor? Carried. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning. Do we have any written or verbal input no, on any no, of these? No communication on any of them. Yep. I'm going to let you have the table here then. Perfect. Uh, so the first one up is uh, conditional use order one of 22, which is for the carrot subdivision. So um, again, all all three or all four of these hearings are all based on conditions off of existing subdivisions that we've had come through um, already at the table here. So this is a conditional use order to establish the rural non-farm dwelling site for, for Dell Carrot. It's in conjunction with the McLaren Farm Ventures. So this is uh, this is located at Southeast 181014. And again, it is an existing subdivision that you guys have already had a chance to discuss and, and it was approved. It is a yard, an existing yard site. So does anyone have any questions on this one? Or? That one. You betcha. Yeah, yeah. It's it's slightly under the ten acres that we like to see, but again, it's above five acres, so it didn't require a variation order. It just requires the conditional use order to establish the the uh, rural non-farm building site. So. You mentioned that Mr. Carrot might be coming to yeah, my to my box. Am I wrong with the timing here? Um, Am I early? No, 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 he, no, he, he, he was going to come, but he wasn't. He's not out there. The girls okay. Yeah, there was no one out there when okay. I walked in. Okay. Yeah, so, so it is an existing yard site, but he is planning on completely redeveloping it. So um, he'll, uh, at, the, at the time of it's necessary, he'll come in for all the appropriate tenants and whatnot. So. Okay. Okay. Summers? Oh, Summers? Then we go keep, do all three of them in the site? Right? I guess they're set at different times. Set the times, that's the problem. Oh, okay, then. Summers coming. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. But well, we can't pass up in public hearing, so we have to wait. This order is two of twenty-two. 
Um, it is for Jason Sumner, so uh, in conjunction with Sumner Grain Farm. So they're basically doing the same thing. They're, they're cutting out the existing yard site. Um, and, and it is part of an existing subdivision that we've already discussed uh, at a previous council meeting. Um, so this is uh, Northwest 15, 14, 16. Um, and it is, uh, the design intent is to remove it from um, the, uh, the farm um, itself and put it into private ownership. Um, and the farm line will stay with uh, Sumner Grain Farms and the, uh, Jason and Pam will, will retain ownership of the yard site. So it's a uh, it's 10 acre, it's, it's, you know, they've already created the house and the accessory structures associated with it. So this is just to, again, to take it out of farm ownership and put it into personal ownership. We're bookkeeping the new. You betcha, yeah. Yeah, no, the banks are, are pushing a, a lot harder for this now um, to have that yard site retained by personal ownership instead of farm ownership. So, especially when there's more than just husband and wife inside into the farm. Anyone with that now? Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they've uh, just recently uh, developed a brand house and a, a large accessory uh, detached garage. Uh, and they plan to remain there. And again, no, I've had no communication on any of these. I ended up the planning office. I'm not sure. I don't think the mentality was. No. They're really straightforward. Of it. They're, they're like, like, so. How many acres are you talking about? Ten? They're doing ten. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Would you like to step right into Stewart? Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll just, uh, in the case of uh, Tyler Stewart, um, uh, in this subdivision, they, they are required not only the conditional use order, but this, uh, the variation order because they are under the size requirements that we like to see. Oh no, they have a, a series of bids, um, so not a size requirements issue. Um, so when they decided on the location of their sight lines for the variation order, um, the existing line of bins is just too close on the side and rear setbacks to be able to allow for uh, just the conditional use order. So they need to step down from 50 feet, which is our side and rear requirements, um, to 14 feet on the pro on the rear pro property line and then 36 feet on the side. So again, just reducing some, some setbacks because of some existing bins. So we've got, I think it's three or four bins kind of all lined up on an angle, kind of an odd tapered um, portion of the rural non-farm building site. Those are existing? Those bins. are existing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this, this was um, it, at one point in time probably a yard site, but now it was just a vineyard. Um, it has an accessory structure, but it doesn't have a dwelling. So they will be looking to establish that dwelling for the principal residence. And again, putting, putting this into um, Tyler's name um, because it is currently owned by um, his parents and, and, and himself. So again, private ownership is, is the way we're going with a lot of these real non private dwelling sites. And all three of these things on the resolutions, we were we had a thing that we're adding in any um, future access costs. We're going to be. You betcha. So that, that are was we covering that somewhere here. That was. Are we doing it in conditional use orders? I thought that was a subdivision. Yeah. So so we covered that off as a requirement of the subdivision. Oh, so that's. Yeah. So that. so again, uh, all three conditional use orders to establish the non-farm dwelling sites are tied into existing subdivisions. So. So that was a condition of subdivision yeah. that any new access is covered by them. So. Okay, so any questions on those three? Well, there's the conditional use order and variation order tied together in those ones. So it's together. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the first two are just the conditional use order and the last one is the conditional use order and variation order. So that's uh, very short, one of 22. So. Yeah. We've got resolution 28 and there's resolution 29. Are they different? They include the variation order on 29. Yeah, so, so um, at the 9th, yeah, the stewards. The one is to. During the meeting, we'll go into it. Yeah. Okay. If uh, somebody does show up five, ten minutes later, we'll hear them anyways. But these resolve the public hearing regarding conditional use orders and variation orders be adjourned at 925.
And the regular meeting of council is a new mover. Right. All in favor? Carried. Okay, here we go. <coughs> Resolution 3022. Be it resolved, the council approve the conditional use order number CU01 22 NCL for Dell Carrot, the application on behalf of McLaren Farm Ventures, Inc. A property legally described as PT South 10, 1810 14 in the municipality of North Cyprus, located south of Carberry along PH Provincial Highway 5 and north of the Municipal Road 57 North to establish a rural non farm dwelling site in an AGA culture district. Subject to the following all legal and, legal and construction maintenance costs incurred be the responsibility of the applicant. Approval of this order is conditioned to subdivision application number 4155-21-8305. I need a mover. Seconder. Mm -hmm. Questions? Uh, it should be south of road 57. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Carried. It is all the council approved the conditional use order number CU 22 slash 22 NCL for Jason Summer, the application on behalf of the registered owner Summer Green Farms Limited, a property legally described PT Northwest 15, 14, 16 in the municipality of North Cypress, Langford. Located south of Nepal along Road 81 North to the east of Road 93 West to establish a rural non farm dwelling site in an AG80 agriculture district, subject to the following conditions all legal and construction maintenance costs incurred, the responsibility of the applicant, approval of the order is a conditional. Approval of this order is a condition of subdivision application number 4155-2183-12. Need a mover? No. Oh. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. <coughs> It resolve council approve the conditional use order number CU 322 NCL for Tyler Stewart, the applicant on behalf of the registered registered owners Keith and Belinda Stewart, Tyler Stewart, of property legally described as Northwest 331316 in the municipality of North Cyprus Lagford, located south of Nepal along Road 78 to establish a rural non-farm dwelling site in an AG80 agriculture district. Subject to all the con construction maintenance costs incurred be the responsibility of the applicant. Approval of this order's condition of subdivision application 4155-21833. Mover? Seconder? Okay. Any questions? Should be northeast, not northwest. For Tyler Stewart? Yep. I see the building in Bruce Rivers. Any other questions? That was carried through from my subdivision file. Northeast, then? Yep. yep. Okay. I have changed it. Any other questions? All in favor? Carried. Be it resolved that council approve the variation order number VO122 NCL for Tyler Stewart, the application on behalf of the registered owner Kenneth and Belinda Stewart, and Tyler Stewart, of the property described as PTE. Northeast, northeast 33 13 16 in the municipality of North Cyprus, Lankford, 
located south of Nipoa along Road 78 North to decrease the required size and rear yard setbacks for a rural non-farm dwelling site lo uh, yeah. located in the AG Agriculture General Room from side yard setback to 50 feet and the rear yard setback of 50 feet to the side Oh, yeah. Is this right? Yeah. Okay, setbacks of 36 feet and the rear yard set back to 14 feet. Okay. Sorry, that was a big one. <laughs> all, le all legal and construction maintenance costs incurred, the responsibility of the applicant. Approval of this order is a condition of subdivision application 4155 21833. Need a mover. Right. And we've got in those other ones that uh, cost, okay. Need a mover. Oh, we got that. Any questions? So, are there roads close by where these buildings and stuff are? For. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? All in favor? Carried. about this man's winner. So this was a table from our last meeting uh, because the planning district hasn't had time to review it, correct? Rachel? Yeah, so another thing we wanted to verify is just the setback requirements. So I went back with the, with the numbers. Um, pardon me, because again, North Cypress Langford has different setback requirements for uh, single family dwellings as from confinement areas as well as setbacks for um, development areas. Um, so from the table, uh, I took the single family separation distance from an animal confinement facility of, and again, um, this is from 10 to 100 animal units, um, um, which is 200 meters or 656 feet. Um, so again, I took it from the aerial view we had. I took multiple locations to the property site lines of this new rural non-farm dwelling site. They are with, um, there is no setback issue on this one, but again, um, We'll have to go back and make sure. And again, these are taken from my aerial views, um, and, and they're taken from property site line to property site line. So, um, yeah. So uh, again, the requirement is 200 meters or 656 feet, or 621 feet. Um, so we're we're getting close, but we we are we do fit into into the requirement. So. Um, I'll make sure that on all new non-farm dwelling site locations that I'm, you know, we're taking these precise measurements or as precise as I can do from my ESRI aerial maps. So. This is a non-existing yard site. This is a non-existing yard site. This I is. Guess that's the, why we. Yeah, for sure. And again, we, we had the concerns of the setbacks and, and, and that sort of thing. So I'll make sure that uh, going forward that we are being very careful with those site lines. So. Okay, we have a bit of an issue here too that was brought up in the map of agriculture. Those you know, setbacks. Yes. Those were municipality of North Cypresses. Yes. Not North Cypress Langfords. Okay. They're the in the North Cypress Langford area. But we were supposed to, it should have been brought back from planning to council that at the time of merger, the council was also supposed to look at these setbacks and to create their one for the municipality or Cypress blank. Okay, so and that has yeah. been done. These setbacks are in the, the edited um, North Cypress Langford or the North Cypress bylaw that I'm using. So yeah. it is for the bylaw that is referenced out um, for, not just for Langford for, for North Cypress. So if it wasn't handled properly at the right at that point in time, again these these are amended if, documents from if I recollect the uh, changing the bylaws and amalgamating between Langford and North Cypress. They were already at work at the planning district to 
do this big review. Yeah, we and did. probably said, well, let's catch it then. And well, well yeah. go ahead, sorry. Yeah. But apparently, for the bylaws coming up, we have to yeah. look at it, and it has to be brought forward, and we have to come up with our own. Okay, so we looked at the concerns about this one already. Whereas council has received an application from David Mann's application applicant on behalf of registered owners Mike Michelle and Gloria Mott. File number four one five five twenty one eighty three fifty seven for subdivision of a property legally described as Southeast twenty two ten fourteen. Approval subject to the following conditions that a contingency. Conditional use order be granted, allowing for a non-farm single family dwelling within an AG zone, that the applicant enter into a road development agreement with the municipality, that the future access to remaining parcels be at the cost of the applicant, all legal costs incurred be the responsibility of the applicant. I need a mover to bring that up. Right. Seconder. I got one question here where that he goes into a road development. Or how long a road are we talking about here? 200 yards. Yeah, it's, 300 yards. it's not going to be significant. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Okay. <coughs> Westman Aerial, no, oh, Westman ATV inquiry. Okay, so they had originally approached um, the municipality uh, for a conditional use order, for the planning district for a conditional use order as part of their application to the province to establish this safety trail. Um, now, the, there is a series of privately owned parcels that are just at the trail head coming off of the highway. Um, so there is some hydro uh, access points or access properties. Um, hydro has no concern. They already have a blanket um, access agreement with the Westman ATV Club. Um, the problem is we've got um, one residential parcel or privately owned parcel um, <coughs> that they would need to apply this conditional use order onto. The resident is not uh, in favor of the project and is not in favor of granting access to his property or applying for the conditional use order. Um, so at this point in time, uh, the West Main ATV Club uh, has no options uh, to gain access to that property, even if the municipality were to um, listen to a conditional use order to allow for um, the conditional use order to be applied to the resident's property. And again, the municipality has the ability to apply a conditional use order, even if the registered owners haven't applied for the application themselves. Um, they still can't gain access to the property, so it's, it's kind of a new point to apply that conditional use order, even if the the resident is not in favor of it. Um, so at this point, the only access point that the Westman ATV Club can use is actually the municipal right-of-way. So they would have to enter a new agreement with the municipality to open up that right-of-way. It is treed from, from the corner, basically, to where they're, they're looking at. So this red line, yeah, so this red line comes down off of uh, 351 coming south. This, this diagonal line here is where they access hydro land and then onto the privately owned land. So Mr. McLaren is not in favor of this. Um, it is an existing trail, but that doesn't necessarily mean they have the right one to use it or that, uh, again, they, they've ever had permission to use it. Um, hydro uses it to gain access to the hydro line or property as well as um, the loggers coming in down through the crown land and um, Mr. McLaren has an agreement with the, the forestry group and then they have provincial access, right? Um, so what the ATV club would be looking to do is to open up that teal or that blue colored line straight down the municipal right away and then over to where the, trail, the crown land trail um, is already existing. So again, that is something the municipality will have to look into with Westman ATV club because then it's accessing um, the right away plus there's also quite a bit of development that needs to happen there with tree removal obviously we've got substantial amount of tree remo mm -hmm. removal so i'm not sure how the municipality wants to proceed with that so. i was talking to him there he told me about it too and he says there'll be minimal tree removal for a quad trail it's not going to be built up to the road standard they've got to be able to get the emergency services in that's, yeah. that's the only concern if, again if they the can't 12 foot trail yeah. through there is yeah. what his explanation was at yeah. their cost to do it. So yeah. I don't 
see why we wouldn't want to work with them on something like this. It's an opportunity to work with them. It's more discussion with him as to what really needs to be done. <coughs> Whose word is that? Dave. Probably not. <laughs> That's not too far from my house. Yeah. Would we, uh, would it be reasonable, Dave, if we gave you an opportunity to talk to McLaren and see what the heck's going on? And I, I'm pretty sure there is an existing trail down there and all that stuff. There, right underneath the red line is actually a trail, but the problem is um, it's not something that, it, it's, it doesn't grant access to a principal residence and it doesn't grant access to something other than Crown land, so they can't force the access issue. Um, if there was a residence down in, you know, if this wasn't Crown Land and there was a residence there, then again, they, he, Mr. McLaren wouldn't have the ability to, to remove that access. But it's not accessing something that is necessary. It's accessing something that is um, secondary. So it's it's a recreation trail. It's not it's not a, a point of access that needs to be there. Um, and he's he's pasturing or he's planning on pasturing cattle. They've re removed some trees in there, so. He really doesn't want to have an issue with gates and that sort of thing. So he's planning on closing off um, the access point where, because that's that's hydro land, that, that kind of small portion that's kind of diagonally cuts through. So he's planning on creating some fences and, and whatnot in that space. So um, obviously he can't fence off hydro's access to their own property, but he, he doesn't want um, recreational vehicles into that property. So. That hydro line, is that the uh, steel barn? I would think so, yeah. 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 There used to be a road, a trail, from uh, Camp Hughes south down to some of the lakes, or one of the lakes anyways, and uh, I don't think it's accessible anymore because of quaggers wrecking the trail rather than, uh, not, well, I say not accessible by, by a car or a truck, sure. yeah. uh, a quad or a tractor or something maybe. So it's hard to get on board with them and that kind of thing that's going on in the past. For sure. Um, I spoke with Mr. McLaren a few times about um, different access agreements that he could look at and, and different alternatives to, again, allow the conditional use order to be placed, but then have the ability to rescind um, the permission to use the land if he had concerns with it. He wasn't interested in any of that. So mm -hmm. I've spoken to Mr. McLaren three or four times on this now, and there is just no forward progression with it. He's pretty adamant he wants to keep his land to the cattle pasture and that's it. Okay. Uh, just a question I have. So the quarter south of the little blue line there? This piece here? Yeah, yeah. that piece there is also leased ground for cattle. Um, so yeah. Have you talked to that leaseholder in the summer when he has, he's going to want to put a gate? If, he's, if it's not Mr. McLaren, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure that. who has the crown land lease there. On this map it says McLaren, but it could be somebody else. For sure. Yeah, I, I can check into that. Because um, that is, that's a huge concern with some of the other leaseholders in that area regarding like every weekend their cattle get out because somebody leaves a gate open and then Yeah, there was a discussion yard, so. about how there was his, uh, Mr. McLaren has chased his cattle quite a, quite a distance yeah. to get them out after gates have been left open. For sure. So that's just a concern. Sure, we could grant them access to our road allowance there, and, but then you're going to have to have a gate there mm -hmm. as soon as you turn south on the... Yeah, so, so the, there would have to be something here, and again, um, with it being Crown Land, um, the lease agreement that whoever is leasing that has with Crown Land, they're pretty specific on, on those things, but I, I know there was um, an auction just recently for more Crown Land rentals, mm -hmm. so I'm not, I'll, I'll check in with my Crown Land contact to see who actually has that part portion and see what their requirements are. I think are, if we're so. going to grant them access down our road allowances that we should definitely be talking to that leaseholder there for that information about the, the amount of traffic going through the there. The club was yeah. arrested and going east rather than west. So, so this is this is the primary access point that they're planning on putting a staging area just off the highway. So it comes down and then it kind of swoops into a couple different directions for the actual trail. Yeah. So. The blue line there. I, I thought when they came down they'd want to go east down the uh, hydro line rather than west. Well that's not hydro line near west, is it? Oh, okay. That's just more road allowance, right? Oh, nice. Yeah, so okay, uh, Here, I'll turn my right off. Hydro line will be down south or the route. Yeah, so so this is this is hydro line here. And then the obviously this is the municipal road allowance. So so this is this is the continuation that's all owned. It's owned by hydro. Um, 
So yeah, again, the original. That's a railway line. Isn't it? Yeah. Where's is it the real? Oh, the rail's up further up. Right? Yeah, the rail is up here. Is it not? Or yeah, right along 351. the highway. Yeah, it yeah. runs yeah, there's right. No, there's no hydro line there right now. No, um, but it is. Yeah, you're right. It, it it is owned by hydro. This this small portion here. Um, I think it's if I remember correctly, it's a continuation. No, the hydro line is another half quarter mile south. Half mile. Yeah, we don't show it on these maps. The hydro line is yeah. two thirds of the way down there, that there next quarter. There is seven parcels that are privately owned in this application. Two of uh, this. Uh, so originally, this this very northerly portion was also impacted until we were able to determine that that trail is actually not, in, you know, in, impacted at all. So there was only two for instance, two privately owned parcels. By residents or ratepayers, the rest of them were owned by hydro. And what so, were their comments on it? Um, they are also were not in favor of it. They, but again, um, once we were able to blow up the maps and actually take a look, they weren't actually accessing that property at all. But they, they are not in favor of the the application either. They wouldn't have signed it anyway. So um, we don't have a lot of um, positive involvement from the people impacted in the area. Mm -hmm. Everyone is quite concerned with this ATV trail. Um, again, we they had they've all had issues with with ATV years in the past. Um, so I, I'm not finding a lot of positive involvement again when I'm talking to people just just in this area. And again, further out to where the, where the subdivisions are, where the re rural residents yeah. are, there is some some pretty big concern there. So I had some uh, financial dealings with McLaren. So I don't think I can really, I can't be in, hardly impartial. Okay. Quiet. Um, I thought that their main staging area was south of Camp Hughes there. They were mowing a big area with signs and stuff that they So, so this. Up, so I'm not sure if yeah, this so is new, new information. No, or? this is, this is part of the original application. So they've got three staging areas. Mm -hmm. um, so staging area one, which is um, basically right off of the 351 here. They, they plan, they had planned to put in um, some garbage cans and some parking. Now the problem is that parking is also just off of mm -hmm. the municipal, it's in the municipal right away. So um, the, there is staging area two, which is over by Camp Hughes, and then staging area three is just a primary, or it's a, it's a location for emergency vehicle only kind of extrication. Um, but yeah, so from the map I have the point of access where everyone will be located, or, or where they anticipate people coming in off the highway is, is right here. So again, I'll, I'll kind of open up some new communication could you, with... Could you uh, get a hold of Mr. McLaren? And, uh, I don't really want to cause a whole bunch of trouble. I mean, I'm just relating this to the government pasture. We close that from May 1st for cattle, mm -hmm. for that reason. And here now, if we're going to okay something that's going to go through, whether it's Crown land or private land, this is not going to be one or two... Quads, uh, yeah, so staging. Uh, weekend right. where, I mean, I've seen that build up in the Spruce Woods thing over there. There's hundreds of them. No, it's not going to be one or two quads, but it's, I'm not speaking, per se, for the quads or for the landowners, but you have to realize if we don't work with this quadding group to some degree, the quads are going to just come in anyways and they're going to cause a mess if we can locate them to some area some trail system where it's a little more organized and they can lease themselves, at least it keeps it from bothering everyone. Yeah, they have yeah, made quite an attempt here to, to create a good trail system for themselves. They just, again, they, they, there was some, in my opinion, yeah, if know. you were going to apply for this type of trail system, the first step is to talk to the residents that are going to be impacted. And it seems like there's a bit of a missed opportunity to, to try to get some positive yeah, involvement from the community. From what I've heard on the several times, it just sounds like the <coughs> landowners in the area have just been bit so many times. Because of the, the actions of quarters coming from the city. At least with a plan like this, it gives the quarters somewhere to go, somewhere specific that they can look after it sure. without impacting our neighbors. Yeah. After discussing it with the surrounding landowners and all that, would we have the ability to do it for like a two year term and see if actually something these guys are going to respect the landowners, right? So, so what you would have the ability to do is apply the conditional use order, um, or again, if you don't, because it 
if, unless you want to apply the conditional use order to the privately owned land without the applicant involved or the registered mine owner involved, what you would be doing would you be opening up your right of way? Um, now, as soon as it's opened, I don't know if you can deny access to a, a, an open right of way. So, as soon as you open it up and it becomes something they can access, there's really no way to remove it. So. And again, once they have access to the right of way or the ability to access the crown land, you, the municipality has no authority over the crown land. Right. Yeah. So, like they already have quite a, that one number one trail system is already set up and approved by the province or whatever. It's yeah, everything's approved by the province and crown lands, and and everything is is basically ready to go. The problem is they didn't do their due diligence and talk to the state, you know, the landowner right at the front. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they have access to the trail, they're, they have the ability to use it. They have, they have all the province licensing they need. Um, this was a condition of the license, is that any privately owned land is a conditional use order. Um, so again, it, it, as long as they can get from point A to point B, basically they need, they need to access just the trail head itself. Um, and again, if the best case scenario is basically them covering the cost of removing some trees down the right of way, um, that, that might be the best case scenario in all of this. And then again, it's just strictly held within the municipality and the ATV club. Um, and legal responsibility we have, where we've got it worded in there, we're not responsible for anything in there? So so they, the ATV club carries a liability waiver, um, but that being said, it is a municipal right away. I'm not sure what the implications are if you only open up uh, a trail width wide portion of it because it is a municipal right away. That's something that we would have to look into. Probably something someone will be dealt with snow passing or mm -hmm. right. You have one other concern. Um, it might be a slippery slope if we allow them to clear our road allowance from A down to and over to CD there or whatever is the route that they'll want. If we let them do that, I know that in the future, if you scroll down, mm -hmm. at number two, see how it dead ends there? Mm -hmm. Just because that's where it starts into crown land, lease crown land. Or it is in least ground land where the Stars helicopter landing area is, which is, is right it, behind my place. I, I and thought that Stars Chad was Finley landing has in also, private. Chad Finley has also requested. Oh, wait a minute, that is further south. Yeah, I, wanna, I thought we were already the evac point for the Stars helicopter was actually privately owned land, but I could be wrong. This will be crown here. Is it? This okay. is the. This is the. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, my place too is far. here. Yeah. So this. Too far. What they're what they're also requesting is to come up this fire guard. Chad has asked me this before and they want to make a trail straight out on this road allowance and then drive down the road to get to the casino is their end game plan. So if we allow them on one road allowance and then we say, well, no, you can't do it over here, like in five years from now, there's going to be already a precedent set about yeah. driving the quad. Mm -hmm. What's that? It's going to be more like in five years. Well, I know. Yeah, so it does set precedent. Like I've had communication yeah. with Mr. Finley as well in the past. And I'm, I'm not too, I'm for the trail inside the wildlife refuge and, and all that crown land. That's great, stay in there. But I'm not really um, for ATVs driving on the road. I already deal with that. I'm for not sure. leaving my place yeah. when I'm trying to get to a fire call or something and they're just putting down the road in front of me. You betcha. And they can't get past them like they don't yeah. move, right? Yeah. And they aren't supposed to even be on the ground. Right. That's the another land. Land. Yes. It's uh, crown land that it is. Um, so the southerly portion that, is, that was. So from A to B, um, it, he actually owns that. So, so where, so, okay. Okay. so, so <laughs> where it tapers here, mm -hmm. like this, this is privately owned, and then he, he um, from the map, he McLaren's got at least for the crown land, but there is a portion that is privately owned. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, it, it's a, it's kind of an odd shape just because of the way everything is cut there, um, and it is bisected by that other portion there, but. He, he does own private lands there. And that's that's where we would have to apply the conditional use order if they were going to be using privately owned land, um, just to grant that second use. But again, if they're going to be using the right of way, then yeah, it, it's one of those things. Um, I'm assuming any ATV that is on an ATV trail is supposed to have a license and carry their own insurance. Mm -hmm. So they are technically, if they're accessing this and the ATV club is responsible for, for ensuring that they are properly covered in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I agree. Once you open up a right of way for them, they will be looking to open up others. The one thing you could put in there though, in the agreement, 
for them to use the right away would be to add in a clause that would be based on future council's decision to access future roadways will depend on the uh, the well be how good the ATV club is being that will be addressed at that time for future references. For sure. I'm mean, just basically say this is a one just kind of put it worded. So this is a one off. If you guys don't behave, you ain't getting any more. Definitely. Um, with that also in mind, um, the AT or that portion of right away, not that I anticipate anything coming of it, but it is open to the public now. And the, and the ATV club has their own trail, but again, any municipal right away is, is open. So um, it's one of those situations where you could potentially have someone who thinks that they can access it in something other than an ATV um, in that space. And then you, you probably want to ensure that there's some sort of agreements with the ATV club so that if that right of way is damaged because someone brings a truck through it in some, whatever fashion that the ATV Those side by sides are basically yeah. small trucks. For sure. And they can do a yeah. lot of damage real fast. Yeah, it would be to, to protect the municipality though to say that the ATV club can't come back to municipality and say, oh, well, someone wrecked our trail along your right of way. We want you guys to pay for it or yeah. maintain it or whatever. But again, it's it, we're kind of in a bad spot with them right now about trying to get, get the trailhead open. So. Hey, do you got anything more to add to all this? You seem you, to be involved. You have an opportunity here to work with an ATV club. Yes. You're always going to have your renegades. Yes. You have an opportunity to work with an ATV club that wants to do the right thing. Like every piece of road that they open up down in the future, it still has to come to this table. They're just after this little part for right now. Well, and we've got to work with them if we all can. That's good. If we don't work with them, we're going to end up, they're going to be there anyway. Well, they already are there anyway. Yeah. But yeah. It's, going be, it's going to be lawless, is the yeah. nicest way to put it. It already is. Them, like says. It already is lawless. So I don't think we're going to make a decision on this today. Can somebody reach out to the actual landowners and get their concerns so that we can hear them? And I guess somebody should reach out to Mr. McLaren. We all know what they're going to be saying, but we should do that. And keeping in mind, we've got to respect the people that actually use the land around it, too. Have hey, we, go ahead, Clayton. Uh, has the ATV car. Club contacted CP Rail about their staging area that will be right by the tracks there? In distances um, there and I would assume so. Um, I can check into that. So the, they may have concerns. Yeah, so, so anything that comes through the province as a circulated permit application gets sent off to multiple agencies for comment. Um, so at the same time, the planning district made their comments of um, requiring the conditional use order. Other agencies were able to put in comments. I can check in and, and see what they have for that. Uh, I had made the assumption, but again, it probably do my own due diligence and, and ensure that we don't have any concerns there. So. And in the future, can we get this information forwarded out to us, Trish? Yes. This, yeah, this, the, so the provincial circular Again, this is quite quite a while ago, so um, it had come to the table at least once for for discussion as a council. So yeah, I can I can recirculate it. Okay, we're gonna uh, put this on the agenda for next month again. And anybody who wants to gather some information and do it, let's not drag it out one way or the other. Okay, is that okay with everybody? Can we move on? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Resolution 35022 be resolved by law number 909 2021 to provide for the regulation and control of domestic animals within the limits of the municipality of North Cypress Langford be read a third time and hereby be passed and signed and sealed by the Reeve and the CEO and become law. Can you need a mover? Seconder? Any questions on that? Everybody knows what we're voting on. Okay, it's so voted uh, a recorded vote. Adrianson, four. Blair, four. Murray, four. Grayson, four. Homestead, four. McConnell, Callum, four. Tolton, four. Carried. Unfinished business. Be it resolved the Joint Council accept the resignation of the Kirby Transfer Station attendant Javen Blair, effective January 29th, 2022. Mr. Betts, mover. Right. Second it. No. All in favor? Yeah. Weed Supervisor. Be resolved that Council approve Keith Loney as Weed Supervisor for the Municipality of North Cypress Slanker 
for the year 2022. We need a mover. Mm -hmm. Seconder. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Carry. Deep Wild well, Leisure Lottery. Be resolved that the Council of the Municipality of North Cypress Slankford support the efforts of the Deep Wild District Medical Farm and Leisure Lottery in their application to conduct a 2022 fundraising lottery and agree to fund to fund any shortcomings in the line of credit. Mover? Grayson. Seconder? Welcome. This is something we do every year, so is there no questions? Do we um, uh, ever oh. get an indication of what they're buying or paying for? Yeah, they do. Where they're off? The medical plan. We, the medical plan. we get reports once yeah. a year on their activities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Carried. Can I just um, give you a delegation at 10? Do you want to? Well, I want to smoke it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you wanted to move the legacy fund to the end of the meeting, all right? We're going to, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. okay, we're going to take. Uh, is this guy online or is he uh, here? No, he's here for 10, so it's on me. Well, he's here now, so I guess we'll, we're going to move to this presentation. Is there anything else that you want to talk to Council um, about? The only thing is, um, uh, if, if North Cypress Langford has to decide on the setback requirements, um, like Carol brought up, if, if that's something that North Cypress Langford would like to ha discuss as a council prior to having our open house, we'd like to do... When is that open house? We haven't set a date oh. yet. So uh, again, um, we want to make sure that the bylaws have been re thoroughly reviewed and updated prior to setting any dates. So. Um, if North Cypress Langford Council could review those setbacks um, from the existing to, to again, what you'd like, um, knowing that we, we have to kind of add that into the bylaw, now would be the time, because again, we're opening up these bylaws so, and creating new ones, so. I will point out that I sent the plan to Manitoba Agriculture yes, Specialists. Yes, yeah. and she brought up, that was just one of several issues she brought. Perfect. This is the time to have these discussions. So, so um, yeah. if again, whatever the comments are, we haven't had a, a mm -hmm. planning district meeting in January because of the, uh, having our office shut down for with uh, the COVID incident. Um, so again, um, now is the time that if you've had other input from from other agencies, please review those those at that information, uh, make the changes to the to the bylaw. Uh, I, I can send a, a word document to, to Trish here, mm -hmm. um, and then you guys can kind of kind of redline in those those comments. Just put them in, in a different color so I can see where the changes are to make sure that we're addressing them as, as necessary, and then we can we can start those discussions. So we want to we're we're not going to set any open house dates until we've got these to where councils are comfortable. So um, no one has actually not the other two members of the planning district also haven't set any open house dates because they're doing the same thing. Right. So other councils have also flagged little portions that they'd like to, to address and, and amend, so. You wouldn't send out those parcels, what we wanted us to be for uh, livestock operations? Yeah, so so I had a discussion with the planner. Um, we are not allowed to include a map showing locations of um, uh, livestock operations in the zoning bylaw because of a confidentiality issue, but again, um, what we, uh, I do have uh, two bulletins that, that are kind of prepared to send off to you guys, but okay. I was uh, anticipating that we would have some discussion um, uh, at the next planning district meeting, so that's the only reason why they haven't been sent. No, I was just wondering what was coming. You I betcha. Mean, so, uh, hoping I didn't miss it. No, gosh, I haven't sent them. Um, okay. I, I will send them off. So Basically, that's what Manitoba Agriculture told me. But, point out, um, it is suggested that he, it is Matt when a proposal for a subdivision comes in. It is planning's responsibility, not Manitoba Agriculture's responsibility, to know where all farms are, where all livestock operations are. That they are under the, like, under, as it's written now, you just send it to agriculture and they look at it. We but they don't point at it, it that yeah. it is actually Manitoba, it is planning's responsibility, not Manitoba Agriculture's responsibility. So, Planning in the planning you're referring to is actually not the planning district itself. It's the uh, community and regional planning office out of Brandon. They handle the original um, circulation to all the government agencies, and they handle um, basically the report to council gets generated through them, not through us, uh, through the Cypress planning district. So 
Um, there is a bit of a divide there about um, that information, but from everything I received from that, uh, that office, um, we, we can't include maps that show confinement areas and, and livestock operations with their animal counts as part of the bylaw. So well, then they, not what medical bear you're for. We have to, every well, time a farmer sells more than five cows, we have to amend that map to change the animal units because they're yeah. based in two brackets, right? So, so if a farmer decided to sell off all the cattle, we'd have to open up the zoning bylaw and amend it every time. And I can't go into someone's livestock operation and expressively ask them how many animal units they have. But what I'm pointing out is is that any livestock operation over 300 animal units. That is a technical review through through the province. Yeah. Yeah, and that is public, and those permits are issued through Manitoba Conservation. Yes, those and we have they ac have accurate they counts on. Yeah. They are getting me a map of those ones. Those are the only ones they'll have a map of because it's a conditional use order that's applied through yeah. the province. Um, anything under 300 animal units, and actually, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, North Cyprus is 250, isn't it? You dropped yeah. to 250 yeah. animal yeah. units. So, so again, that anything under that, for sure. But anything under that, I don't have access to those numbers. So, so well, to create a map showing anything other than those, there's a super big vote. divide here too, whether yeah. it's confined or pasture too. So I mean, yes. this yeah. eliminates 99% of the cow calves and all that stuff. It's when we're talking fila. Mm -hmm. So what we should do is sometime before our next meeting, if you guys could get the information that well, you're concerned about and what planning concerned about, anybody who's available, let's attend the meeting. So we don't hold up the thing and go through it. And well, uh, Manitoba Agriculture would like, when we do that, they'd like to be here. Can you coordinate that with Trish and let's set up a meeting and let's get it going? So Michelle Herb, that's her job. Yep. And then obviously notify, go ahead, Clyde. Yeah, just wondered if we could, get, if we did get a meeting together like that, maybe save some time with Rachel at the next council meeting mm -hmm. in a month to go over these get, things. So you can get get Rachel to attend that meeting if you can. And well, notify council, it's busy time of year for the guys with cow, so whoever can make it, make it. All right, we're going to take a slight adjournment. We've got a guy coming in here right away, so five minutes. Okay, Jesse, are you there? I'm in the year. Perfect. Uh, are you guys ready to go? You betcha. Okay. Um, does everybody hear me okay? Yep. 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 Okay, excellent. Um, thanks again for the opportunity to present today. My name is Jesse. I'm calling from Saskatoon. Uh, the company is uh, Connex Wireless. Uh, I'm curious, who do we have in the room today? Oh, the council and the CEO, and we have uh, people taping it for uh, our local television. Thing too. We can uh, introduce ourselves if you'd like. Okay, um, I didn't really hear that, so... Okay, uh, I, can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Yeah, so yeah, we have all of our council members here in our room. Uh, we also have NACTV uh, recording our meeting. So, okay. all of council is present. Okay, excellent. Um, I'm going to uh, get going here by... Uh,
reservoirs and quite a few municipalities in Manitoba as well. Um, some clients near you that um, you can reach out to and learn about their experience with our systems. Uh, RM of Glenborough, South Cyprus, um, RM of uh, Cornwallis, uh, Oakland, Wallanisa, uh, Elton, Minto Odana, Rosedale, Oakview, uh, Lorne, Norfolk, Treehern. All of those uh, municipalities are clients of ours in some capacity. Um, now, in saying that, so I'm just going to cover uh, this quick slide here. We break down the benefits of our system into three aspects. As you can see here, there's a quite a few uh, benefits for municipal administration. Uh, the main benefit is we want to save administration administrators time. Uh, it's their responsibility to um, collect and organize all of the data of operations, and we want to minimize uh, the time spent to do that the manual data entry, and uh, we want to make lives easier, essentially. And so that is the goal from an uh, admin perspective. Um, from a public works perspective, uh, we want to um, give uh, managers the ability to see what's going on without hassling employees. Uh, we want employees to have the ability to um, uh, show the work that they're doing, because uh, in our experience, uh, greater operators, um, other types of equipment operators, uh, take a lot of pride in their jobs, and they uh, really like the ability to um, show that the work, show the work that they're doing uh, in situations when a ratepayer makes a complaint or um, says something happened and um, it might not have happened. Uh, your operators can simply refer to our data, and and it, regardless of what was said it shows what happens. So um, in our experience, operators like this system more than councils or administrators do because it gives them objective proof of the work that they're doing. And we have quite a few clients with unionized workforces and um, it's the unions that want these systems in place more so than uh, managers and councils. Um, from a council perspective, ultimately it's uh, council's job to make decisions, uh, whether it be um, how operations um, might, uh, might be organized or where money is going to be spent. And so uh, our data gives administration and public works the ability to give you information um, in uh, compiled reports, easy to read, to make better decisions. And that's ultimately what we want you to have the ability to do, is make better decisions to improve your municipality. And so that's just a very high level um, point of our system. Um, the first uh, solution that I'm going to, uh, actually, before I move on, is there any questions with any of those three sections? Or is that pretty straightforward? I think we're good. Okay, excellent. First solution I'm going to touch on is our greater package. Um, I'm sure uh, you're familiar with uh, manufacturer systems such as JD Link or Vision Link. Uh, those systems are great at what they do, and a lot of the time they, they come with the purchase of a greater. Uh, but they are very different from our systems. Uh, they focus on the health and uh, welfare of an individual machine. So they'll tell you engine temperatures, RPMs, and uh, they'll tell you when an oil change is ready or needs to be done. And a lot of times they'll tell the dealership so that they can send those parts to you ahead of time. And so they're very good at that. Um, there is a GPS aspect, but it is limited in the information that it provides. And that's kind of the niche that we fill. Uh, we focus on the activity, productivity of uh, your fleet as a whole, what they're doing versus how the equipment uh, currently uh, is, so to speak, health-wise. And so with our system, uh, you can look at a variety of different reports to see your fleet's activity on a monthly, daily, weekly, any um, day range basis. And in a map, um, you can see uh, not only where a grader has traveled, uh, which would be basic GPS, uh, similar to factory, uh, you also see where a grader has traveled uh, and 
their blade was down in operation working. And you see that on a map, like you see here, a blue line would be blade down, red line is blade up, just driving. And if you click on a particular unit, you can see their current status, so to speak. Um, that, that is extremely helpful for our clients in determining where work is actually being done. And uh, part of the uh, minimizing of administration, we provide um, automated reports. So administrators don't even have to log into the system. Managers don't have to log in. The information is delivered directly to your email, either once a month or once a week. Um, an example of that is right here. I'm going to zoom in. So uh, this Bifrost Riverton is one of our clients. And so this is an example of a report sent, a monthly report. So they have three graders and uh, these hours are related to how much blade downtime, actual work time was completed for the previous month. And this distance is how much distance those units traveled with their blade down. On the map, you can see um, corresponding. So Garrett is blue, Ron is orange, and John is yellow. And their activity corresponds in the map. And so you can see where they worked and um, uh, all of that information. And then uh, in chart form, you can see uh, a breakdown of, uh, okay, over the last month, there was 313 total hours that those graders were moving. Uh, they traveled about 124 hours, and uh, their work time was about 188 hours. And then it breaks down by individual as well. Uh, and then same thing for distance and uh, idle versus runtime. So uh, that just gives you a high level view of what's going on and where the action is happening. If you need to uh, zoom in and kind of figure stuff out, you click on uh, that road maintenance report there and it'll take you, uh, this is just loading here. And so it takes you to a live, or not a live map, but an interactive map where you can zoom in and you can see, okay, this particular road, Range Road 36, over the past month has been uh, graded one, two, three, four, five, six times. So there's been six passes on that particular piece of road. And um, yeah, it just, just gives you the ability to kind of see exactly what's going on. Any questions with this report? Okay, that makes sense. Excellent. Um, not only that, you can click on routes. So if you want to see dates and times, uh, click on that. And then in the map, oh, let's do two much here. You can see that. Uh, oh, come on. Garrett, uh, on December 6th, was down this road. Uh, he had his blade down for three kilometers, and it took him 22 minutes. So just very straightforward information. Okay. Okay, just a second, Jesse. We have a question. Hold on a minute. Okay. Does this information go straight to the office, or yeah. would we be able to access it on our No, office? it'll just come to me. Okay. Yeah. You would probably the form, right? Yeah. Sorry. What was the question? Just about the information, the reports, who they get emailed out to. So I just was just clarifying that. So we're good. Okay. Nope, that sounds good. Um, yeah, if there's no other questions, okay. I will move on to another example of reports. Uh, this is a report that we've recently developed called the Industry Average Report. Um, one of our clients uh, was a one-person office, and she didn't have a lot of background in uh, grading, um, I guess, operations. And so she basically said, Jesse, uh, we have all this data, but I have no idea what it means. I don't know if my fleet is uh, doing well uh, or if they're uh, laying behind. And so uh, we built, it's called the industry average report. And so you can see um, on a weekly basis, how much time and distance that your fleet has completed and we give you a utilization and productivity score and then we compare it to the industry. So in this particular example, um, uh, a fleet has three graders. So uh, three graders total available hours is 120.
20 to 40 hours per unit. And uh, so they were active for uh, just under 61 hours, and that's a utilization of 50% compared to the industry average, which was about 65%. And of that uh, 60 hours, their blades were down uh, 34 hours, so about 55% of the time, and that's above uh, the industry average, which was uh, 51%. And um, obviously you can't uh, do a distance utilization, uh, but uh, productivity-wise, you can see uh, that uh, their distance uh, covered uh, was uh, about 62% with their blade down versus 58% uh, the industry. So it just gives you a bit of a benchmark for um, determining uh, how your fleet is uh, uh, performing. Now, we understand that every... Uh, RM or municipality is, operates a little bit differently, and on a week-to-week -week basis, um, there, there could be a variety of reasons that uh, uh, these numbers are lower. Um, we provide the information. It's up to your administration and management to determine um, why uh, there was a blip in the reporting, so to speak. So maybe a grader was down for repairs, or you had three employees that were sick that week. And so that's, that is just some of the nuance of operations. And we provide year-to-date uh, information as well to give you a better average of uh, how your um, fleet is performing. The same as that other report, we break it down into charts. Uh, so by unit, uh, in distance and time, and uh, yeah, just um, any questions with that particular report? Nope, I don't okay. think so. Uh, the last uh, thing that I wanted to show you with the graders is our snow removal map. It's a feature that we've recently developed. Um, We've gotten a lot of snow this winter across the prairies, and our clients were looking for a way to notify their uh, taxpayers and bus operators when a particular route was completed. And so we give our clients a, a link to a map, and that's updated every four hours. And uh, all of the routes on that map are associated to time. So uh, this pink area down here, those are roads that have been graded in the last four hours. Uh, green would be the last 48 hours and so forth, all the way up to 72 hours. So it doesn't uh, give taxpayers uh, an exact location of where the graders are because you don't want uh, people to be following, so to speak, but it does uh, give them the information that they're looking for. Uh, is my road passable? Or uh, will my road, uh, does it look like my road's going to be done uh, in the next uh, four hours, so to speak? Um, any questions with that feature? Nope, I don't think so. Okay, awesome. Um, one thing that I wanted to touch on that I don't have uh, uh, anything visual for right now, uh, we're in the process of developing a new feature, a uh, new reporting system called Mile by Mile Reporting. Uh, typically, our system has focused on the equipment and what the equipment is doing. Uh, if on a fleet basis. Uh, with this new reported feature, uh, we're going to be focusing uh, uh, from a road perspective. So selecting a particular section, say a mile or two miles of road, and how much activity has happened on that uh, section for any day, week, month, or year. Um, and being able to uh, break up uh, or determine where your budget is being spent. So you can see how much time, distance, and dollars are spent in each section of the RM. Uh, does that sound like something that would be beneficial for uh, the municipality? Could look into it, yep. Okay, excellent. Uh, so that's the greater package in a nutshell. Um, okay. Next solution I'm going to cover is the molar package, which essentially provides all of the same reporting in terms of activity uh, that the greater package does. The main feature that our clients uh, like about this system is the hazard detection. Now, talking with Trish, uh, she had mentioned that uh, your mowers historically have gotten pretty beat up hitting <laughs> culverts and other hazards, and which is not uncommon. That's part of the reason we developed the system that uh, we have developed. And so um, she gave me a rough number of around ten to $15,000 a year in repairs uh, to your mower. Um, that was 
a guess. But. So, <laughs> the system that we have developed uh, provides hazard detection. So your operators are notified uh, when they get within 10 meters of a location that's deemed a hazard, like a culvert. Uh, an, alarm, an audible beep will go off in the cab and let the operator know there's something in front of them. And when they drive around it safely, it'll double beep to let them know that they're clear. That single feature has saved our clients thousands of dollars, uh, upwards of ten to 15000 uh, in avoided repairs. A single tractor tire is $2,000. So um, that adds up pretty quickly. Uh, I've spoken with multiple uh, foremen and managers who have told me they have brand new green employees and they didn't hit a single culvert in their first uh, summer of operations. And it, it just reaffirms that the system works and it works very well. Um, any questions with that particular uh, system? Nope, I don't think so. Okay. Um, so from a financial <laughs> perspective, um, that hazard detection, that almost pays for this entire system just by protecting you against those unnecessary avoidable repairs. So um, that is very valuable to our clients. Um, you guys contract out your uh, gravelling? Yes. Okay. Uh, we, we do have a, a gravel monitoring system. I'm just going to touch on it very briefly. Basically, it allows you to keep track of all of the uh, materials, where they're being dropped, the cost of each drop, and um, how, uh, I guess, how that compares to a budget. Now, um, if, uh, this is primarily designed for a municipality that does their own uh, graveling, but we do have um, clients that have stipulated in contractor contracts that in order to be a contractor, you need to use our system. And that's how they keep track of all of the graveling. Um, it's just an easy way to objectively verify that the gravel that you're paying for uh, is being dropped where uh, your contractors say it's being dropped. Um, is there any questions with that system? I don't want to spend too much time there. I think that would be beneficial, obviously. Oh. Yeah, it'd be hard to convince, but yeah. <laughs> um, I recently uh, did a presentation for one of your neighboring RMs, and they had a lot of their contractors sitting on the presentation. And um, historically, uh, they only had one or two contractors that would bid for the contract. And um, during my presentation, I think there was five or six uh, local area contractors that said that they would um, bid for those contracts uh, if they knew that there was, uh, I guess, a transparent way to confirm that wh whoever the winning bidder was, was uh, doing the work that they were being paid for. So. Um, not only does our system give you transparency, but it creates more competition, which um, could lead to uh, better pricing uh, for your gravel contracts. But um, that's, that's all I'll say about that. If there is any additional questions or interest, um, I can come back to that. The last uh, couple things that I want to touch on, um, our system does come standard with Google Maps. Uh, we give the optional ability to include your uh, municipal map as an overlay over top of the Google Maps. And so, as you can see in this picture here on the right, uh, Google in rural areas doesn't look great. Uh, it's a lot of empty space. And on the left here is someone's uh, yeah municipal map overlay. So you can look at the road names and land owner names that you're used to looking at to easily discern where the work is being done. Uh, that's an optional feature. I would say probably 90% of our clients use that feature because it is so beneficial. Um, this exits GIS system. This is what you would use to mark your culverts or any other um, hazardous location to assign to the hazardous detection system uh, in your mower. Or it's just this box that plugs into an accessory port, and then when uh, either uh, a summer student or foreman driving around, they get over a culvert, they push this button, and it marks that location in math form and list form. Uh, very straightforward stuff. Any questions with 
Nope, we're good. Okay. Um, last thing, I, I guess there is one more thing. Spring, do you guys do spring? Yeah. yeah. Do you contract that out? Nope. nope. Okay. Uh, it's very similar to the gravel package. Uh, you can keep track of all of your chemical and where it's being sprayed, how much the cost of that. It just breaks it down um, very easily. Um, is, that, is that something that would be of interest? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Your oh. operator. I just um, have a question here, Jesse. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Is there a program as well for just the rest of the trucks on the DPS only? Like, so they wouldn't be doing any tasks, right? They're yeah. Just, they're driving around. Um, I know we kind of talked about this, but we have like public works trucks. Um, is 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 would your system be able to set something up for that as well, or? Yeah, so okay. We do have, we do have uh, I guess, standard GPS fleet tracking. Okay. You're talking about yeah. half-ton trucks? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that would be uh, a basic like plug-in device that uh, plugs into the little uh, OBD ports. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's yeah. where a mechanic plugs in for codes. Uh, yeah, it's just a little device that plugs into there, and it's um, very straightforward. Um, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I guess with this uh, sprayer package, uh, the, the operator, when they fill up their tank, they type in uh, how much chemical they put in, so in liters, and then uh, they, um, so when they turn on their uh, switch, their boom switch, the system sees that, and it sees what, uh, what chemical was put in, and so on a map, you can see where the chemical was put down, how much chemical was put down, and the cost associated with that. Transportation budget. Oh, I'll have to look at my. I don't have it in front of me. This is second. I can find it though. I was gonna okay. say about five hundred thousand is what I was thinking, but. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, at five hundred thousand, uh, I have a little cal calculator here. So our system in the first three years of uh, operation would be about. Uh, yeah, just under 2% of your budget to run our system. So uh, very, very small um, in the grand scheme of things. And then uh, in year four and forward, you're looking at just over half a percent of your budget to operate this system. So um, it is uh, relatively, um, yeah, very inexpensive. Now, in saying that, uh, uh, here is the quote. Um, I provided this to you, correct, Trish? Yeah. Okay. So has council had a chance to look at it, or should I go through it? I think you should go through it just quickly here, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, greater package, uh, $1,500 each, uh, uh, six graders, and then um, there is a service plan associated to each unit. So that service plan co covers a few things. That covers the communication from the device in the grader to uh, uh, GPS and cellular. It uh, covers all of the software, software updates, uh, access to the software, data storage. We provide uh, unlimited data storage and we store it forever. Um, and it, it also includes customer support and training for the life of the system. Uh, we train all of your staff uh, in, uh, uh, I guess, training sessions similar to this. Uh, as much as is required. We want to make sure that you know how to use the system and efficiently. So that's um, included in the package. And uh, yeah, the more package is a little less expensive. There's uh, a little less hardware. So it's $1,200 per unit. Uh, the same 30 bucks a month paid annually. So 360 times three. Uh, that exit marking system is $1,000 for the hardware and then 30 bucks a month. Uh, and then the map overlay is a thousand a one time fee of a thousand dollars. Yeah, the uh, sprayer and uh, gravel packages are fifteen hundred dollars each. I don't have them quoted.
reported here. But yeah, same as the greater. And because there is more reporting involved, uh, they're forty dollars a month, uh, so four hundred eighty dollars a year per unit. So okay. Um, so for I've sorry, Jesse, just a quick, uh, just a quick question you here. You can answer this pretty quickly. Yes. Obviously, gravel spreading doesn't happen six months of the year, so. Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to... Gravel spreading is, uh, only happens six months of the year, and so does mowing. So is, there, is it just 12 months that we pay, or how does that work? Yeah, uh, the, way this, the way it's set up, uh, our, provider, or our providers um, ask us to pay for a year in advance, uh, and so we have to do the same for our clients. And so um, when you purchase the system, you purchase a full year of service in advance, and then uh, at, at each anniversary, you would pay for the next year. Okay. That's just how it is. More we'd be paying, we'd be putting the tractors on the plan, wouldn't we? Yeah. 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 So they may still lose in the way. That's the there. second, Jesse, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Okay, do you have a question? Can you ask him how much the rest of the fleet half tens are that how much are the fleet half ton package that you did they say fifteen hundred dollars? Oh no, the fleet the half ton. Yeah, is, sorry. Uh, Two hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, for half ton. Okay. And then and then uh, one hundred and eighty for the service plan, so fifteen dollars a month because it is just basically tracking. Okay. Okay. Thank you. How many half tons? How many half tons? Um, okay, one, five. two, three, four, five. About yeah, I'd say five. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Five. Okay. Just a second, another question here. On the sprayer package, yeah. how detailed do you keep track of the weather? Uh, on the sprayer package, is there any details for keeping track of the weather? Uh, we do have a uh, built-in uh, link to a weather tracking uh, software. So when you click on a particular event in the map, uh, there's an option to click on uh, a, a link that takes you to the weather uh, for that particular day and time. Okay. Okay, does it oh. keep track of wind direction during the spring? Does it keep track of wind direction when they're spraying or anything like that, Jesse? Um, there's no hardware um, built into it. So, uh, like, the link will give you a, a rough estimate of wind direction, but in order to keep like accurate wind direction, you would have to have a uh, hardware um, mm -hmm. attached. And so um, the weather reporting does give wind direction, but if you're looking for deadly accurate, then uh, it okay. would, you would have to include hardware. Okay. Like I'm looking at in case somebody comes after us for a spray drift. Would we have a record to come back and say, no, it wasn't blowing your way? Yeah, we would. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. The wind direction from the station yeah. is picking up. And how strong Sorry, the wind just a second. Was. It would all be up all that data from the station. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, okay, we're good. <laughs> I can see it being very beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, that's my presentation. Okay. Uh, I guess I have a question. Uh, does this system, uh, 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 are you guys interested in something like this? Do you think this provides value to your operations, to your reporting? Yeah. I've got a lot of nods around the table, so yes. <laughs> okay, okay. No, that's, that's, that's great to hear. Um, we have quite a few clients that have told us the exact same thing, so it's, it's always nice to be reaffirmed that we're, we're doing something right. But, um, yeah, I guess uh, if there is interest in the system, uh, one, one thing I would like to mention, uh, we are um, not immune to the world's uh, problems right now. Uh, logistics, I'm not sure if you're familiar with China, COVID, all that jazz, chip shortage. Um, one, one last thing, if there is interest in purchasing the system uh, and you don't want to worry about shipping delays or any price increases, uh, the, the sooner you decide, so to speak, uh, the more likely that you'll have, you won't have to deal with any of that stuff. Okay. That's all I want to say. Just have one more question, sorry. So yeah. Let's say we decide to start with 
Just one. Either just the sprayer or just the graders as kind of a trial. Mm -hmm. And we like it after the first few months. Can we add other things in at any time or like just another package or do we have to wait till like a year? Yes. So I guess the question is, is if we go with one of your packages, like just to try out and then if we decide to add on something after the fact, can we do that or like, like you can yeah. wait till the year's done or how, how does that work? Uh, no, no, you can, you can purchase in any, uh, any fashion that you would like and then um, you can add uh, as, as you see fit. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay. I think, does anybody else have any questions while I have Jesse? Going once, going twice, no, okay. Uh, if we do have questions, I, I have your email. So. Do you have a copy of the total? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The total uh, did you want me to add or take anything away from the quote? Um, if you could add just the rest of, the, like, the spraying and the fleet, I think. Um, what about warranty? Um, I have a question about warranty on this, on the hardware. On the hardware. Uh, all hardware comes standard with a uh, one-year uh, manufacturer uh, warranty. Okay. And so that covers uh, defects, anything uh, that yeah, shouldn't break, so to speak. Okay. Uh, but what I, what I say to that is we don't like keeping angry clients. Mm -hmm. And so if uh, something is out, out of warranty and, um, yeah, needs to be replaced, we work with you to provide uh, uh, replacement parts at uh, very discounted prices. Okay. Awesome. Installed. They ins you guys install, correct? Sorry? You guys install this, right, for us? Oh, no, no, sorry. I, I forgot to cover installation. Um, okay. We don't do any installs ourselves. Okay. Uh, we provide very detailed installation guides. I would say probably 95% of our clients uh, do their own installs. Um, a grader, for instance, uh, you basically mount the module and then um, it's a three wire install, power, ground, and ignition. So if you have someone that can solder a wire, you can do those installs. Uh, if you would like, uh, uh, we can um, provide contact information to a third party who would come to the site and complete the installs for you. That would be an additional cost. Though. Okay. Okay. If you could include a ballpark on that price. Yeah, maybe just include a ballpark on that one for the installation. For the third party? Uh, ballpark yeah. uh, would be roughly $200 per install, so per unit. Okay. Uh, so it's a ballpark and, uh, and travel time. And we uh, we do have uh, installers uh, that work out of Brandon. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any more questions? Oh, no, we're good. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And I will get back to... Most likely this week. <laughs> uh, just one spray truck? Uh, yeah. Yes. I'm like, yes, one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will uh, send that updated quote to you right away. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll touch base later in the week. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you. You have a good day. You too. We're going to continue with the meeting, and if we have time after, we'll discuss this further. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go legacy fund. We're going to do that after two. Hire Dan Boucher. Be resolved that the council hire Dan Boucher as foreman for the municipality of North Cyprus, Lyford, and set wages according to the union agreement effective March 7, 2022. Need a mover? Okay. Oh. Oh. Second. Okay. Being personal manager, if there's any questions. Uh, yeah, any questions? All in favor? Carried. Be resolved that Council Hire Terry Bennett as public works operator of, for the municipality of Lakeford and set wages according to the union agreement effective February 14, 2020. Need a mover? Like. Seconder? Welcome. All in favor? Carried. Be resolved that council accept the tender from Malcolm Marie in the amount of $6,500 for the Cannibal Caterpillar 60 scraper located in the Lankford shop. Need a mover? David. Seconder? Like. All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's carried.
Oh, it was all tendered. Yeah, and yeah. Malcolm actually was the only one who submitted a tender. Yes. Yeah. It was all the council accept the resignation of Trevor North Public Works Operator as of January 28th, 2002. With regrets, mover. Seconder. Okay. All in favor? Carry. Offer to purchase slots in the room. Yes, back. I did. Okay. Because I received an offer to purchase on some lots here, and so it's from. Doug Jardine says, Dear Arm of North Cyprus Council, I would like to purchase the lots 13 to 19 in Anglo. Thank you for your consideration. He did send me another email this morning. Sorry, I just came to say I forwarded you one on the weekend that he sent me to you. Yeah, it? so I have this one here as well. So I'd like to tender to purchase the vacant lots of 13 to 19 in Anglo. The rule numbers here my tender is $300 per lot of a total of $2,100. Thank you for my consideration for my tender, and I look forward to hearing from you. So where are these lots? Is that the ones with the cairns and all that stuff? We reviewed selling lots in Inglewood, Wellwood, Brookville and all that stuff. I'm surprised that we didn't list those at the same time if they were available. No, these ones we own. Yeah, there might be, We don't. I don't know, we'd have to check and see if there any of those lot numbers have that monument on it or not. Because there's just a picture of the lots that we own. Mm -hmm. There's like four together in a row and then two together. Are they right in the middle of town almost? Yeah. That's you have that picture that I don't have it on me, no. I don't. I can get it if you There was objections to selling some of that stuff in Inglow by the residents there because of the cairn and all that stuff. Was it in Inglow or was it Oberon? Inglow. Well, Oberon, we Oberon. sold the church instead of a different oh, yeah. lot or something. Yeah, that was a very strict, right? <laughs> right, that's that what it was. That we're trying to reconcile if yeah. they haven't yet. <laughs> Was this advertised in the paper? No, like it, it we just offered um, something that should be probably put out for everybody to have the opportunity. Okay. And this, this is a little bit. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's if that's what council wants to do. It did, whose yeah. word is it? It doesn't take long to go figure out. I'm sure that that Karen's is. If, it's, it's, if yeah. they're in the middle of the town, to you, Trish. Okay, yeah, that would be awesome. that's where that is. And then it can go up on the screen. Yes, please. I thought when Mitchell bought the lots, he had bought every, yeah. pretty well everything that was available. That was available, I thought. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Okay, we know what we got to do there, right? Here, just Clyde sending me a picture here. Should be in outer space now. Oh, oh, oh. If this, these turn out to be uh, available lots, we have to do the same thing that we've done in all the other hamlets and areas. We would have to list them. And there would be a minimum because of what it costs the real estate agents to list them and all that stuff. Yeah. Because they don't do that just for $300. Mm -hmm. Did you go to my spam folder? If the um, church monument was on one of them, nope. would we nope. want to sell that lot no. and to. say that the monument couldn't be removed. Well, Why, did you go into we should never sell it because, I mean, if there's a monument there... No wonder we don't get anything wrong. What the heck? <laughs> I'm sorry. A monument, for hey, sure. there's a picture right a monument there. needs to be preserved yeah. somehow. So that's, so that's what, what the yeah, information... Yeah, that's what we had from the office here. So by the looks of it, 18 and 19 is right by the street, and I would say that that's where the Cairn is. Or the monument on 1819. So then roll 208600 is owned by the Arm of North Cypress Langford as well, 13 to 17. Well, so we would have to go for a drive and measure. Which ones did Mitchell buy? Uh, not 8 to 12. Yeah. Oh. Or 1 to 7 is Mitchell, sure Mark Mitchell. The monument is. Yeah. All of them? Like the monument doesn't take up 7 lots, does it? It's just a they small monument, for, but yeah. they're not, I don't know, I remember. So I, I, I could go there with a long tape measure, right? Mm -hmm. There should be a pin somewhere. I think you measure can. There was lots in Wildwood because they had a park on it. There was lots in Oberon where there was monuments and the school that the rec district wanted to retain. And Edrin's 
we just had the same offer and memory was good enough to say no, the rec district wanted that right outside the hall. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we got any notes on that time, but if we're going to do it, we probably should protect ourselves if we can assert that they are sellable, they have to be listed and then mm -hmm. yeah, the real perfect. estate agent would tell us what that cost would be. It's going to be more than 300 bucks. A lot because the, we have paperwork to do and all that stuff. I believe the background story on this is um, Mark Mitchell had let Doug Jardine know that there was still available lots, so whether at the time that he purchased lots, he remembers there was more that didn't get purchased, or I don't yeah, know. Maybe. You could so do that was the connection there, that's when I, I got a text or a call from Doug saying, hey, there's it, supposed to be these lots still. So. You know, is it to build a house or what? Yeah, you want to live there and build a house, yeah. Okay. Well, do you guys want me to, we can look into that? I'll go, that yeah, I'll take a drive out there and do some. I'll take a look and see where the monument is. Yeah, yeah if, if the monument, years. like if it is taking up all those lots, then yeah. well, then that's fine. Number six or five or six, that'll be Bob Drysdale's house mm -hmm. on one of those. Mm -hmm. I think the monument is smack in the middle of that. But anyways, okay, so let's get that information. Sure. Find out if they are sellable. I don't know who the leader of the community would be there, but... Do you know there was a reason why they weren't sold? Do you know the what the frontage is on a little lot? Like I'd have to look to, yeah, I'm not too sure. And how wide King Street would be? Yeah. Some kind of starting yeah. I can look. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay, I'll bring that back to the next so we'll just, scene then. Yeah, this day will have to go. North Star Seeds approach request from MI. Who's that? Natural Bank Infrastructure. Okay. Um, no, no. I can do this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so I got an email from Rob Wolf, who's the general manager for North Star Seed. Um, it says, Dear Trish, North Star Seed, North Star Seed LTD requests that the east side approach to our location off Highway 16 at Road 81 West be widened for safety reasons. Long semi trailers have difficulty with the sharp turn into our location when approaching from the east. We have recently, and on one more than one occasion, had semis ended up tipped over the ditch. The approach is the access to North Star Seed, where we have constant deliveries and pickups by semi trailers coming in from Winnipeg. We are hoping that the RM of North Bay First Lanker can assist us by forwarding the request to Highways Department, as it, it as it at as it is at an intersection between the provincial highway and an RM road. So if anyone knows where North Star Seeds is, it basically goes about 50 yards off the highway and you turn into North Star itself. Anyone that's westbound on the highway with a semi, if there's oncoming traffic from the west, they can't make a proper loop with a Super B in onto our RM road. So quite often if the guy's got someone up as an S or whatever, you could, whatever reason, the truck just cuts the corner, it, they flip it. They said they've lost four in about the last 20 years. Um, one was recently just after a meeting in January, I suppose, see they had that place on site. And North Star Seed just wants to put in a request to Manitoba Infrastructure to get some sort of an off, like they don't even need a passage <coughs> or an extra turning lane, they just want something that they can make that approach wider so we can avoid this. Because mm -hmm. those back tra those trailer tires are just what they do, they drop off and then. <coughs> It's so us. coming off 16, so it's a highway. Yeah, and that's just that they need a letter from us to basically get Manitoba infrastructure stated in the issue and to say we need. Have we ever done that before, or what? Have they, they approached Manitoba Highways themselves? I've never seen that. Taylor, oh, not the this specific one, but we've had other ones where we've done the application to do approach. Off yeah, the one off of 351 yeah. for. And Lizards. Starts down five. five because we we're building roads. But so this is just widening our road, right? Is what we want to do at the approach. Yes. It's their expense. At their expense. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They and said that they're expense. fine with that. Yeah. They've got no problems yeah. with it. It's just they need it wider. Yeah. Not so because you're attached to the highway. It's basically, it's, too, it's within that setback. It's they all just this has to go through highways. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then we should maybe write them and uh, highway department that. We would, I don't know, 
agree that this should be done or something like that? They were just looking for a letter of support. Yeah. 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 Send them a letter of support. Okay. Thank you. So they're looking at road widening the road, or are they looking at widening the approach into their facility? It's the road as it turns off of 16 onto our road. Yeah, so they're, they want to widen that road. Now, what's the next question going to be? To widen their approach to get into their facility they, the next time? Because they, they come right off of 16 and then they go right into their facility sort of thing. When I was talking with the gentleman, he said they didn't have a problem making the turn off of our road into their facility, ever. It's always been trying to get off 16, and I think it's basically because it's a semi, he doesn't have the opportunity to take any of the west lane to make that the, the easy, the sharper turn, and he's got someone up his ass, so he makes a couple, he cuts the corner short. Mm -hmm. So it's a highways issue, but we'll give him a letter of support. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. As I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. No, that's, if that's everybody's cup. Yeah. Yep. He's resolved the council right off $82.50 for row number 12.43.50. Need a mover? Person. Seconder. David. So was this an overcharge or an undercharge? So or? this was um, one of the Grand Trunk Pacific properties. Um, so assessment has removed this role because it was, it accumulated $82.50, but assessment has removed it as a role number completely because it was, I guess they didn't catch it or whatever, so now we just need to write it off our books and it's no longer a role number in assessment. Any other questions? All in favor? He resolved council sent an annual increase for all non-union municipal employees and council at a minimum of 30 cents or COLA as per COLA increase percentage for Manitoba at 3.3, which is whichever is higher. And furthermore, he resolved pay be retro to the first day of the first pay period in 2020. Need a mover? No, sir. Seconder? No. Should that say 30 cents per hour instead of just 30 cents? Oh, sorry. I guess I can get that. So, question. Is 30 cents higher than 3.3? No. No. Okay. Any other questions? And um, this will be, sorry, just to comment, this will be used going forward, like mm -hmm. for the rest of until you guys decide to look at it differently um i think we could safely drop this 30 cent thing no we needed that last year because yes. cola was 0.05 or whatever so then that's where this comes from is last year 2020 2021 okay yeah. all in favor we decided we passed this one last year as well right yep this so this one was passed for joint only okay. right so this is for our municipal employees that aren't unionized. Yes. Okay. That makes sense? Yep. Okay. Communications, have you made oh, them all available on uh, I, to this? Yeah, yep. I can hear you read. Thank you, read them, yep. I um, didn't see the, well, the rec ones, but they're in there somewhere? Yep. Yes, they're in there, yep. Here, I've got, I can put them up here. Just give me two seconds. Yep. The first one, Wellwood, we are requesting their regular amount and that we retain half in the reserve. Has everybody read the correspondence? I'm not yeah, yeah, I never saw the rec ones, but I can read them after so you okay. don't have to. Um, this will be discussed at budget, obviously, as well, but I thought I'd give you this. So just highlights, are they doing any major projects in Wellwood? You see flooring? So uh, there's they did the flooring. They will be if it's not in there. Yeah, new flooring yeah. installed, yeah. Mm -hmm. New doors well, and entryways. Yeah. And we are doing some repairs on national right here. I'm surprised yeah. it's not in there, but And they did run the poker debris. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Look like I forget it was huge. Some mm -hmm. of the best ones ever. Sitting soul. Like it was awesome. Nice to have some snow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Hills. Yeah, Blue Hills um, detachment sent their quarterly report. Everybody read that? Yep. Okay. Ronald McDonald House sent their thank yous um, for our donations. Or I'm trying to find it here. There's a whole report. There it is. Um, MMSM sent their um, 2022 recycling funding payments for this coming year. So this is a budget item, but this is the payments that we will receive for this year for that. And Central Cinnaboyne Watershed just sent their levy, which will be another budget item as well. So just stuff for you guys to look at uh, if you have grant request. Um, this is from the museum. So again, another budget item we can look at. We will be discussing budget, 50-50 budgets, obviously, with the town as well coming up. So uh, this so is the bulletin from the government in regards to emergency lighting allowances for personal vehicles used by paid call volunteer fighter fighters, just for something for you guys to look at. I don't know if you've read it. Um, they're just giving you lighting allowances for personal vehicles. No. How do we apply for those those monies mm. at that I'll fire? I'll look into one. that, but I think or there's email. an email here. Do you want me to get more info from them? Or, yeah? Sure. Okay. Mazel. Mazel. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then Hudson Bay Route Association, their membership request for 2022. We did do a membership last year. Um, we did do one last year? <coughs> yeah, you know what, I was going to take that out just in case I'm wrong, but I'm positive we did. I, I know we did it for one year. Yeah. Was there not a check in them, that thing for them again? Yeah. So we did do one for last year for 300. <coughs> do you want to do it again this year? Is there another one? Yeah, okay. So we'll eventually get yes that or back or into operation. Is it a yes or a no? Well, it's a budget one. Let's bring it up then. And what do we what do we get out of it? Membership to the association, basically. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, then we got the RCA museum newsletter here. First Plains Attachment and their request, which is in another email, or their stats. Do we receive any money on the uh, for speeding times and stuff? No. No. Um, and then I don't have Adrian's on here, but I do have it in front of me. I didn't scan it in because, of course, I was at home. <laughs> and, um, sorry. So they requested 5000 from their reserve um, to help cover costs incurred by purchase of new tables, chairs, along with their full levy, which was 7000 So again, this will be a budgetary item, but I'll, I will discuss this, but that kind of came in. Can we put the uh, actual request for the five in there? If they're actually quite happy. Oh, do they, they need the... If we could request the five from their reserve this meeting, that would be... They have 5,000 in the reserve? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what it's there for. Yeah, they would officially like to request that uh, for cash flow. Okay. We don't need motions or anything from just acknowledgement that, that yeah. they are taking from the reserve. Okay. I don't know. It's tables, and chairs <laughs> <laughs> tables and chairs, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, that's, that's what it's for, that's right. Um, and that was it for your correspondence that I have. Okay, quickly over to the committee reports. Did anybody go to an archive? Carbon? Uh, you want to talk about? Val is resigned. Oh. We will be looking for a new archivist. Hmm. 
done a lot of work over the last two or three years on that. Isn't she? Yeah, but the fact is she regrets, but it is because of sickness in the family she has to. Okay. Arts Council? Yes, I have one email to you. Um, there's a craft sale plan for April 9th. Um, there are four sign classes set up, two for spring and two for fall winter. Um, and the office is working with the rec office to help summer programming. There's going to be kind of expanded child care program. Um, and they're also, also working with the rec department for a splash park fundraiser. Um, and uh, there's collaboration with Nova the person on um, their, a mural for truth and reconciliation um, for the post office wall. And uh, since opening, there's looking into bringing uh, entertainment and concerts. Thanks. For your information only, that's a privately owned building, so you oh, definitely yeah. need it's to contact that. It's been in the works for like a couple years. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Health and Hall, I think uh, Health has been very active uh, in the Kirby area here. We finally got them to repost a greeter, somebody to answer the doors during business hours because the nurses in the... Oh, I, I just got a question for you on that. Okay. okay. Um, they did go ahead and give authorization to the committee to purchase. They had a list of 10 requests that they had there. There's some that have to be looked into further, but we've opened up some of the reserves to buy some needed stuff for the nurses and all that. The hall, I think, is um, we, is a different committee now. It's run by uh, just mm -hmm. councillors as a whole, right? It's the joint committee. committee. Yeah. It's the joint, joint, joint committee. Joint committee. Okay, yeah. yeah. you got a question? Yeah, so that uh, posting for the greeter that the REK posted it's for casual so is that not like going to be a permanent position like are they just going to have people until COVID's over and then nobody there anymore when the doors open that's a long or what, what there's been that? a lot of movement on it and there was no reason why it wasn't they advertised it once very vaguely and nobody applied so they took it off well, we've been in touch with um, to, pardon me not, not many people will apply for a casual position if they know they're not going to have it in three it, it's a very very contentious issue with the region mm -hmm. and I think they've emailed the health minister and all that stuff and that's how we got the action on that so I it's an ongoing thing it was just yeah. crazy crazy evergreen environment how much I won't put go on <coughs> It's a garbage topic. <laughs> Fire? Um, we have it uh, January. We didn't. We just, with the, some of the new regulations, the restrictions that came in in January for Omicron, um, we didn't do training in January and we did, uh, we just kind of chose five firefighters and then the captain to go and go over the trucks rather than having 20 guys all meet together. So uh, we're hoping this month. We'll be able to get back to a little bit more normal again. We just had a precaution so that not all the firefighters end up with COVID together or whatever. So, um, it's been kind of a slow month even for the weather we've had, which is good. Do false alarms and stuff. So. I assume we can get from you guys' reports and budget the income for accidents and all that stuff on number one and number five and all that stuff because the income that we get from uh, yeah. NPI, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it seems to be mentioned a couple of times that the amount of work done in the RM versus the town, mm -hmm. probably the same percentage would be the amount of income. Yeah, and that income reflect comes, on that, comes right? directly to the fire department yeah. so that we can purchase stuff yeah. so we don't always have to come to council That's for right. so three hoses or yeah. two helmets or whatever. When this discussion so. continues, we should either have that information or at least, at least use it for a. I can ask um, Gopher to get that from our we'll bank account because we'll have all the if we have that ready deposit and deposit. Okay, library? Uh, we have a meeting coming up on Wednesday. Uh, they got a new director of library services hired. So she's Ali Walchuk and she's kind of getting oriented to the job. So. 
Um, there's not much else to report. We're going to approve a budget on on Wednesday. Um, I expect that we'll be assessed more in the wireless past year. They are paying their staff a little more money, a fair bit more. Plus, the uh, and Carson left here and went to Brandon. That was a new position he went to, so there's the wages drop, I guess. All over. What is our um, census figure for a municipality now? Um, it's 3,011, I believe, is what the new number is. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's close. <laughs> yeah. And the local library, they're open and operating. And there's been quite a bit of interest in this new uh, 3D printer they have. I think Gloria's doing a really good job. Oh, she is amazing. Yeah. In museum? Uh, well, Gloria had a yeah. bit of a report there. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're looking at this roundhouse deal. At our last meeting, we committed, to the museum committed $20,000 with their funds. Oh, so um, is that held in reserve somewhere? Or? In their bank account. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, they've got, um, I don't know, 50000 or so in their bank account, I think. So, uh, yeah, I, and I think we have a meeting before, oh, no, maybe not before. I think our next meeting is going to be our annual meeting and our regular meeting. I don't think that's till the beginning of March. Are you thanks? Anything planning while we talk? Plan? Just a meeting coming up this month or t Thursday night, that's all. Didn't have a meeting last month. And we're going to try to get together in the near future to discuss these agriculture stuff. That we... Yeah. Okay. Seniors and handyman. Nothing new? Uh, we were meeting last week and uh, signed the check for the last installment of the new handy van, which was supposed to be potentially here last month, so any day now, the state-of-the-art, mm -hmm. easy access, easy to drive handy van should be showing up. And uh, Debbie's still working on the grants to try and find the funding for the outside structure for COVID safe activities. She has applied for a, a grant for another van, but it seems as though they're not too readily available anymore. No, so. better hope for this year, but there's been... No. Yeah. So, um, there isn't enough money, there was enough money on hand to buy the one that's coming in the day. Yeah. There won't be enough on hand to purchase another one. I suspect that's going to be more evident in the future. Mm -hmm. Both levels of government are cutting it pretty mm -hmm. tight up. Okay. Handy van up at the north end there. We might as well talk about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, we're yeah. part of it there. Our operators have resigned and we hired a new young guy to take it over on a temporary basis. And we've got a consulting company doing a study on it to compare us to other places around the country and whether there's improvements or whatever. So they got a grant for that, correct? Yeah, they got a grant for that to do it. So. Just a heads up, out there we had a, it was a $10,000 grant from the government, whether you've got one here or not, for sanitation of the handyman. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that was talked about at the joint meeting, I think. Yeah. That somebody it's something that you could that. maybe look into to see whether you could access that or not. I'm not sure how we got it up there, but you can get a $10,000 grant, grab it for sanitation. Just a heads up. Like that, that's all, thank you. Okay, can we go <coughs> quickly around the, yeah, right, around the table and then we're, because there's good people that have the timeline here. Clyde, do you want to start? Around the table? Yep. <laughs> uh, we are going to have an in camera, so if you think it's going to come up there, then. Yeah. No. Good. Yep. Harold? Okay. Mm -hmm. Alice? Uh, just a good job to the guys out there running. One man down, we're comfortable in mm -hmm. snowstorms. So I actually have more 
comments of others. Well, some people are frustrated, but there's comments of in our area, things getting done quicker as we're getting more practice in it too. So happy folk in general, actually. And to the staff in here for letting man down for a few weeks too. There are I have a couple of things. Um, wondering about the discount for the regional library on their the girls, insurance. Yeah, I have Still been away and it's being dealt with. It just hasn't okay. been touched yet because um, I haven't been here. So I read the audit re the report from the auditors on the how the audit went and everything, and it seems like there hasn't been anything too, uh, too glaring or, or loud, so, so good job to you, Trish, and your staff. Thank you. Uh, I noticed today driving into Brandon, the highways has done some bridging in the fields, and I wondered if we do any of that. You bet you have miles of it done. They haven't had time to do it this year, basically. Mm -hmm. and the man down. Yeah, they normally do. Yeah. They've done some, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's all I have. Okay. I know we've requested it, and also we'll get to it, and I understand why. Because it's well, I would think the ditches are getting filled up, or there's lots of shallow ones, so and even the deep ones are getting full. The highways department has Pat Baker out on 351 pushing the old snow up and he's got 30, 40 feet high banks along 351 right now mm -hmm. in certain places. Mm -hmm. I, don't okay, uh, I don't solicit the comments but I get a lot of them and it's been very positive for what the weather has been and all that stuff. I, you know, I'm not... Definitely they're doing all they can. Hopefully the new guy coming on today will take some stress off them. Do you have anything, Trish? Yep. Um, so Brookdale Hall received a $3,000 grant um, just for upgrades through the I think it's Building Sustainable. Kara, our manager of leader services, applied for them for that. Yep. Um, and then a DFA claim update. So we received some money in regards to our last submission and the lady who is looking into that for us is going to be getting us more money hopefully so there might be some more money coming for dfa yet she said that there was some things that weren't claimed for but should have been but we were one she, she looked into it and she can actually claim them again and there's a whole story behind it either way we're hopefully gonna get some more money that would be nice so she's gonna give me a report on that um there's a you say, you, that's not the fire claim. no this no that's no, flood. flooding still no, from 2020. <laughs> Um, so we have, so we've done our um, board of revision, we set our date for that. Uh, what assessment's doing now is we're coming out to discuss with council the tax impact for the 2023 reassessment. So I have scheduled that date with them, it's not till June, um, but I will, I will let you guys know. June 13th is when I've scheduled that for, so um, I had Val, um, her resignation from archives. So I don't know when she's done though. I no, she's going to stay on until you have a new okay. person. Okay. So there is that. Um, <laughs> and then um, our, um, what is it called? Our mitigation preparedness program, um, which is what I applied for to get the money back that wasn't covered from DFA costs. It was $22,323. So, what I will do and what they've directed me to is to put that into a reserve account um, for a project that council can agree on to fund for that. Uh, and I was wondering about a webcam purchase for our meetings. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, like the town kind of had. It circulates around. I know it's quite expensive, but I do think that with the times we need to get something like that. So I did look into the cost of that one that the town has. So what it does, it does the whole 360. It, it, so it, when you're talking, it, it comes to you and, and uh, it records. It's actually, sound and stuff is really good as well. So it's very expensive though. So it's about $1,400 for that. 
but I can budget for that this year too. For office I would expense, say but I do think it's put it on the budget discussion. Okay. That cell phone sitting there, if you went and bought it, it's a grand. So right. It's really not that much. Yeah. Like I just think with having these virtual meetings, like it's hard because they don't see they just see me, and I would. I mean. Yeah. yeah. And even like our meetings, they need to be. Yeah. So well, it alleviates you using a cell phone right. to record it. You can just record it on that. Yeah. Thing. And yeah, that's all I have. I, I got one question. Uh, we had the check for the Brookdale Lagoon the final payment, and I wondered where are we as far as setting up a reserve. For the yeah. So, um, I had to get back to Mr. Lyle, who's doing our bylaw, because he didn't have the correct. Because there was more houses in there than he had. He had, I think there was 38 and there should be 43. So we had his calculation wrong, so I've told him that he has to reassess that. And he's going to be giving us a bylaw, but that's another discussion I want to have with you is if you want to wait, because it will hold up your budget. No. Um, or if you want to wait till next year and get it exact numbers figured out and have the time to do it, and then. Oh, you should do it right. Right, yeah. We should. Uh, and I know that we wanted to have a meeting with the residents again oh, wondered, yeah. to discuss yeah. what the cost would be because it is a bit more than, and I will send out the bylaw to you guys when I have it here. Um, but yeah, I am working on that. So. Yeah. I think we should send out an interim letter to them saying that the uh, final payment's been made. We've been in contact with uh, sanitation trucks that they should be on a. Note that there will be a charge for that, and the bylaw will come out next year. Like if we, this we summer, have, have meetings with them. And stuff. Right. Yeah, we don't have to go to another meeting. Mm -hmm. We've got all their addresses because we build. Are there? Yeah. Yeah, I that, just had. There's a few other ones that he, like when I looked at the numbers, I knew he was off because I knew that there was more houses connected. That also puts the cost down, right? So the more there is, the better it is for everybody, right? Don't we have to give them an opportunity to vote or something? Yeah, so when we do get the bylaw going, we'll have a public hearing and we hear all their okay. input then. So, I mean, we could do that. The only problem is, like, with budget coming up for May 15th, you have these public hearings and then it takes a while with the government to the municipal relations board to yeah. hear it and it's kind of... One, two weeks before you have yeah. So we're delayed with our budget, and then taxes are delayed, so it kind of, <laughs> the domino effect. So we want to do it properly, is what, yeah. But yes, good question, David. And sorry, I haven't updated you on that. Okay, um, we're going to take a small recess, and the rest of the meeting is going to be in camera, so. Okay, I'll just get, I'll get the motion where you go into camera, I'll go in camera on here, and then I'll shut it down. Okay. Being resolved, the council's committee of whole move into camera to discuss personal matters, need a mover. Seconder? Clyde. All in favor? Carried.